Here we are again at the Trader 24 Studios. Following a month-long strengthening of the U.S. dollar, the 13th of July deservedly took its place in modern stock market history as not only was the parity of the two major currencies, the euro and the U.S. dollar recorded, but the parity remained on the board for at least 32 hours, with investors seeming to enjoy this rare spectacle. Meanwhile, oil lost $100 again, hitting three-month lows, accelerating concerns of an impeding recessionary plague as OPEC and investment firms insist on catastrophism and truncated economic growth rates for both 2022 and 2023. Equity markets did not go far as the optimism from the NFPs by 372,000 in June, when in fact it was expected by only 250,000, was perished in the fire of hesitancy that is catalyzed by the imminent release of the CPI data, whose change will also decide short-term directionality, recognizing that inflation is a major problem for the domestic market. Lastly, the freight market is under pressure, gold and silver are plummeting to everyone's surprise in such an inflationary environment, and the government bond market remains under pressure with institutional portfolios leaning towards cash holdings. You were watching the Trader24 Global Market Overview, let's take a closer look at the situation. On Wall Street, investors preferred not to take risks and let the main indices close with control losses amid uncertainty about what will happen on the CPI front, which is expected to be announced in a few hours. The New York Stock Exchange Index saw a loss of 0.74% at 14,395 points, and despite 10 sign changes throughout the regular session, it was close to the daily lows. And given that Wall Street has been on a downward crescendo for weeks now, and that Friday's levels, which were not reached, relate to serious resistances that could halt the upward reaction attempted in the context of the partial easing of pressures, the risk of a downward continuation is present. S&P 500, Nasdaq, and Dow Jones closed near their intraday lows at minus 0.92%, minus 0.95%, and minus 0.62%, permanently in negative territory with market indifference evident in most large cap and sectoral stocks. All S&P sectors closed negative with energy at minus 1.95%, technology minus 1.37%, and healthcare minus 1.27%, recording the largest losses. The small cap sector was better but still negative, with the Russell 2000 at minus 0.22%, while the VIX risk index also gained 5.01% to 28.58 points, demonstrating the opening of the betting gap in favor of a fall, or at least no rise. The main negative protagonists in large cap were Endo, minus 19.67%, ServiceNow, minus 12.74%, and Paycom, minus 17.23%, that overburdened the board. In the technological sector, Atlassian had a poor performance, minus 8.70%, CrowdStrike minus 5.92%, and Workday minus 5.33%, while the industrial Dow Jones, only 7 out of 30 were positive, with a spotlight falling on troubled Boeing, which recorded a plus 7.42%, on the pace of optimism for recovery of all airlines, with American Airlines at plus 9.98%, and Delta Airlines at plus 6.15%. In the pre-market now, most listings are hovering around unchanged with the Chicago futures giving no clear direction with plus or minus 0.2% at least for now, and Asia closed with mixed signals with a Hang Seng unchanged and the Nikkei at plus 0.54%. We recall that the mood is catalyzed by the upcoming June CPI results. The market is talking about 8.7% in total and 6% in structural, with energy now accounting for 34.6% of the total, a level not seen since 1981, with fuel prices rising 106.7%, setting an all-time record. European markets are recording losses on the major stock exchanges, the DAX and CAC 40 at minus 1.2% and at intraday lows, while the 50 and 600 euro stocks at minus 0.90 and minus 0.65% respectively. 
Banco Santander stock recorded their biggest losses at minus 5.04%, followed by those of Banco Bilbao at minus 4.85% and Daimler at minus 3.26%. On the macro front, the European Central Bank signaled a moderation of the aggressive 30 basis points rate hike to 135 basis points in the coming weeks, with the problem of historically high inflation at a median of 8.6% remaining the heavy problem of the period. In U.S. Treasuries, sellers took it in stride after the flurry of selling in recent days, leaving the 10-year yield at 3%, 5 basis points lower than local highs, with that of the 30-year climbing to 3.20%. The yield curve remained at 10 basis points, with the 2-year around 2.90%, confirming the sensitivity of the bond market to the Fed's words. In Europe, the German Bund reduced the yield to 1.18%, and the spread of the Greek is estimated at 236 basis points. In the Forex market, the U.S. currency continues to strengthen, with the respective DX index recording a new 20-year high above 108, Five points, while the euro's major exchange rate against the U.S. currency is under pressure, seeing historical parity. The pound now stands at 1.19 and the Swiss franc at 1.02. The yen dollar exchange rate is also at a 24-year high above 137 yen. In commodities, as if the acute problem of very expensive natural gas was not enough, with TDF remaining at 172 euros per megawatt hour and Henry Hub at 6.30 dollars per million thermal units, there is also the pressure on the oil price, with crude losing 100 dollars again at quarterly lows. And while the catalyst seems to be the ever-decreasing demand, as also described by OPEC, the implications of a recessionary puzzle are visible, considering the actions required by central banks to withdraw liquidity from the financial system due to high inflation. Copper saw a 20-month low of $3.3 per pound, confirming recessionary fears due to the disruption caused by the new lockdown in China, and even though the large Las Bambas mine in Peru returned to normal operations after a two-month suspension of operations. In agribusiness, wheat lost $8 per bustle, approaching four-month lows, while corn saw a five-week low at $7.3 per bustle due to the USDA's new pessimistic report on expected supply. Finally, in the fried market, the Baltic lost 3.3% to close at 2,013 points, with the Panamax closing negative for the 16th session, with a 3.6% loss, and the Supermax seeing 5-month lows after its own 14th session downward streak. In terms of economic releases, today's focus is on the results of the U.S. CPI for June, with forecasts calling for the index to stabilize at the same level as in May. A few hours later, the weekly crude oil inventory results are expected, which had soared in the first week of July by 8.235 billion barrels. However, now the forecasts indicate a fall in reserves of 1.933 billion barrels. Today, in Europe, the UK GDP results were released, with the UK economy growing by 0.5% month-on-month from May 2022. In terms of corporate announcements, today is the X date for Accenture's dividend, with a yield of 1.41%, up 16.3% year-over-year. Today, we also await Delta Airlines' financial results, where forecasts call for $1.65 earnings per share and $12.23 billion in revenue, up 25.45% and 23.54% respectively on an annual basis. PepsiCo's financial results yesterday were noticeably better than forecasts, with earnings per share at $1.86 and revenue at $20.23 billion increased by 6.4% and 3.5% respectively compared to the forecasts.
Bitcoin continues for the fifth day in a row below $20,000, losing 4.3% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum also dropped by 9.1% from yesterday's highs at $1,086, currently trading just above $1,050. As for altcoins, Ripple's XRP is up 2.55% since yesterday, currently at $0.32. In other news, crypto lender Celsius, which froze customer withdrawals last month as the collective crypto slump began, continues to pay back its outstanding loans in a bid to avoid bankruptcy. Yesterday, it fully paid off its debt on the DeFi protocol AVE, releasing $26 million in tokens. Thank you for joining us today. It was the Trader24 Daily Global Market Overview. Stay tuned for our next comment on the financial markets.